Welcome to our devos where we have been talking about fighting fair. Most of the problems that we have in our lives with conflict is that we do not know the rules of engagement and we don't fight well. I'm not talking just to married people, though married people will benefit from this. I'm talking about conflict in general. You can't avoid it. If you are bumping up against other sinful people, you're going to have to deal with conflict in one way, shape, or form. And especially if you're a leader, a manager, somebody that, you know, is maybe a team leader, if you're in school and you have one of those group projects, you know, John Acuff said, this is funny, this is a, a, a random thing, but John Acuff said that one of the funniest things his daughters ever said to him, he has teenage daughters, one of his daughters said, oh man, I am so glad that I'm going to be done with group projects soon because I want to be able to finally get to a workplace where Everybody, you know, carries their own weight and everybody's working the same way. And he said he laughed so hard he thought he was going to need stitches because group projects in school basically are translated and move on to work projects where some people work really hard and some people don't work at all. And you still have to bring the ship into the port, as Pastor Mike would say. So we have to deal with conflict, folks. We have to deal with conflict. And so one of the things that we do with conflict, this is, I'm, I'm just going to be completely upfront with you. I, I debated about this, but I will always tell you before I ever preach or teach anything, it hits me first. And this is something I feel that God has been working on in me, and I'm trying to be a ton better with it, but I'm, I'm, you know, I fail a lot. And it's this, when you have a conflict, when you're in the middle of a conflict, don't rehearse the offense. Don't rehearse the offense. What's rehearsal? Well, we have wedding rehearsals. A wedding rehearsal is just like a practice of what the wedding's going to be like, right? Well, what we do with rehearsing an offense is it's just like a replay of the offense of something that's happened, and we replay it over and over and over again. Except the only problem is when we tend to rehearse the offense, we don't do that necessarily with the person we could that we're having a conflict with, but who do we rehearse the offense with? With everybody else, right? You know, you have a bad conversation with your boss. What do you do? You call your best friend or you call your coworker, not your best friend. You call your coworker. <laughs> Listen to what the jerk just said now. You know what they actually did? They actually said that my sales numbers have never been lower. When historically, okay, so they say all the things, they rehearse all the things that they should have said to the person that they have the conflict with. And then they go to the next person, click, hey, did you know what the boss just said? And what happens is they keep going and going and going. And what they do is they rehearse the offense. Couples do this. Couples do this a lot. Um, when they're married, a lot of times what they'll do is, you know, they, you know, they have a fight with their significant other. And unfortunately, one of the places this tends to go, which this is super deep and just extra bonus counseling for you. If, the, the, you know, if you're married, this might help. Um, it tends to go to the parents if you have a remotely healthy relationship with your parents. Like you call your mother and you're like, yeah, you should see what he did today. He's such a jerk and he said this and he did this. And then you have this nagging back and forth conversation with your mother about your wife or your husband. So then what's going to happen? Well, the next time another confrontation comes up between you and your spouse, you call mom again. Hey, you should see what they did this week. They are so stupid. They do, And you say all the things. You rehearse the offense. You rehearse the offense. And what happens? It grows bigger and bigger and bigger. While at the same time, what you're doing is you're diminishing the value that that external person has for that other person. So if you do it with a coworker, you're diminishing the value and undermining the value of your employer. And you're like, well, they deserve it. They're a bad employer. Well, maybe you should get another job. Maybe you should think about that. If your employer is so bad, why don't you go somewhere else? I don't know. Just thoughts. There's tons of jobs out there. If you hate it so bad and you have to talk badly about your employer all the time, maybe that's just not the job for you. Now, when I say those kinds of things, it sounds like I'm being harsh, but I'm not, because there's a really good chance that you talk badly about your boss in the last job, and the job before that, and the job before that, and the job before that. It's not your boss, okay? You're in a pattern of rehearsing offense, and when we do it, it really destroys relationships in a, multiple, a multitude of ways. It does it with that person that we have a conflict with, but it especially really damages those around us because then you're known as that person who just, oh, she's going to call me and tell me her problems she's having with her friends again. She's going to call me and tell me about all the problems she's having with her coworker, you know, and, and it causes issues. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 9. This is a beautiful passage, and I've, I've really been committing this. Pastor Luke, uh, in, our men, in a men's study that he did a couple weeks ago, talked about 
forgiveness. And this is a verse that he brought up. And he says, whoever covers an offense, this is what the Bible teaches, whoever covers an offense seeks love, meaning they cover it, they get past it, they move on. He says, but whoever repeats a matter, repeats a matter, repeats a matter, separates close friends. There is nothing truer than that. Now, spouses do this a little differently. Spouses often will rehearse their offense back to the spouse. Yeah, this is just like you do, you do this all the time. Remember when you did this? Remember when you did this? Remember when you did this? This refers to my first point about being historical. But what we do is we replay and keep revisiting that same offense. Like we keep digging at the wound and digging at the wound and then wondering a couple days later why it's not healing. Like, oh, I thought that would be healed. Why am I so upset about it? Well, because you're rehearsing the offense. The best way to do it is seek to cover the offense. Doesn't mean that you completely gloss over. It doesn't mean you don't try to address it. But what it means is you want to get past it. You want to heal it. You want to see that wound. You want to see that offense tended to. So what will happen is the relationship will be restored as opposed to this constant, you know, malignancy that happens in the context of the relationship. I want to encourage you to keep discussion about the offense to the person and the conflict to where it should remain. Don't keep rehearsing it because it's only going to rip apart more of a relationship that's already in tatters. 